Right, uh, so just to, to sort of finish off this bit on additive synthesis, um, we haven't really added anything yet. We've just been investigating uh, oscillators and um, uh, and enveloping. Well, we can combine all of those things uh, in order to yield uh, this, which is um, an example of additive synthesis um, and one that you know gives you some quite interesting uh, timbres, I think. But basically, the model is what we've already looked at so it looks a little bit scary but if I chop off a large proportion of it you will see that each individual um, routine or uh, engine <coughs> for the um, oscillators is uh, basically a duplication of this and this is what we've already looked at so uh, the left hand outlet of the keyboard uh, slider goes into M2F and then out of there into a patcher object. So if we look at this, it's not terribly beautifully done, um, but the right hand inlet, which is this one here, uh, goes into, so the frequency is going into our uh, oscillators, various oscillators that we've got here, and then the left hand inlet is carries our message from the U menu, and so that is um, determining what's happening in the selector object. So that's uh, that and then on the right hand side of the keyboard outlet um, <coughs> that comes out and that triggers an envelope so it, we're not using velocity to control anything we're just using it to trigger um, sorry we're not using the velocity to trigger the overall level of the sound we're just using it to trigger an envelope which is controlling the um, level of the sound so here's our multiplication object and obviously we've got a, a global uh, amplitude control down here the others, as I say, are just duplicates of that. <coughs> so we have um, each each one of these engines is the same. The difference is that we have um, some multiplication objects which uh, take the frequency, the converted um, value from so so the pitch value frequency, uh, and multiplies it by well two, three, four, and five, which gives us the second, third, fourth, and fifth harmonics. Um, so an octave above, an octave in fifth, two octaves and two octaves in the third, above our, what we'll call our fundamental. Um, and so <coughs> uh, we, we get sort of, uh, well, we get some cohesive um, quality to the sound. It will do, um, so I'll, I'll play a note. Well, nothing happens because I haven't turned any of these on. So I could do that manually. Let's turn all of these on, so sine. So I'm duplicating, well, I'm, I'm uh, combining a bunch of sine waves. Okay, it's going to clip because there's quite a lot of uh, volume there. <coughs> but of course we could um, combine different types of oscillators. Uh, so I could, um, for, for each of those uh, harmonics, we could have a, a saw and a triangle and a square and a uh, saw again. <coughs> and by, by choosing different um, combinations of those, we, we would get different timbres, as I say. Um, over here, which I haven't shown you yet, is another object which you would find, or potentially quite useful. Uh, it is a preset object, and what it does is it stores the state of whatever you send it to. Um, in to, this usually you'll connect it to some graphical interface objects and it will re recall the state that they were originally in. So in this case, I have a bunch of envelopes, I have a bunch of oscillator settings. So you'll notice if I click on uh, this first one, everything turns off. Uh, next one, I just get the, the first sign, second sign, third sign, fourth sign, fourth sign, fifth sign, and then in this last one, I get a kind of combination of oscillators. But you could store a bunch of others. So now that the left-hand outlet, whoops, sorry, um, is connected to <coughs> the um, the U menu, um, then whatever I send, if I if I um, whatever state they're in, sorry, whatever I send will update the state of those objects and I can save the state of those objects if I change them 
So I'll do some alternatives. Um, by pressing shift and clicking on an available slot. So that is saved and now I can uh, just go back and recall what I just had. Um, <clears throat> so we've got that for the oscillators. Well, I've also got it for the um, envelopes. And just checking time, plenty of time. Um, I click on the next one along and it will give me a, another, you know, another... Um, kind of sequence here, well not sequence, um, set of settings uh, and you notice that here I've got a kind of evolving uh, timbre because the, the peak of each one kind of is later and later in the uh, in the available time which is about a second. Next one um, makes that more obvious. But obviously this is much, much more interesting than just having a static tone. Um, <clears throat> so I highly advise you, those of you who have to do an assignment for this, to make use of the, uh, the fact that, thing, you know, that the sounds can evolve. Um, so you can use envelopes or modulation to do that. And then finally, uh, this one which is a kind of wobbly one. But the fact that they all wobble in slightly different places uh, means that you, you, know, you get a fairly dynamic sounding sound. And then finally up here, uh, we can also change the uh, relationship of the partials. So here we've got uh, two, uh, two, three and four, so what we had before. But here, now I can change them to much closer. So we've got, this would obviously be one times the frequency. This would be 1.17 times the frequency, 1.6, 1.75 and so on. And that gives us something very different. Um, I could make that much closer actually, which would uh, give us something probably quite interesting. So I can go slightly below the. Uh, oops. There we go. And maybe 98. There we go. Yeah, so you get some sort of beating as well. Anyway, <coughs> so this is, uh, you know, additive synthesis. Um, in 5b we'll go on to talk about subtractive synthesis, which obviously um, is going to involve um, starting with a complex timbre rather than this where we're starting with a, a simple timbre, so a sine wave or a sawtooth or something, and building those up. We could start with a much more complex timbre-like noise and whittle it down using filters. Um, but having learnt both of these, additive and subtractive synthesis, you can then combine them. So you can make a relatively complex timbre using, um, using additive synthesis and then uh, whittle it down using subtractive synthesis. And again, by making those things evolve through time, you can generate some really quite interesting timbres. That's before you even start to look at modulation. So uh, we'll go on to that shortly. <laughs>